Hey everyone, I am back after such a long gap. It's been ages since I've been back. And that's why I wanted to base off a new microcontroller. This is ESP. 32C3, a very popular modern microcontroller, to do my future home hacks and projects. But I also wanted a quick way to test out many options that are possible with this microcontroller. And that's why I tested eight ways, eight different ways on how we can do a hello world of the embedded systems, which is a blinky LED. And what I realized is that the eight ways or many other ways are not as important as the fundamentals that I learned and that's what I want to share with you. Starting with the method number one that I tried which is the manufacturer's SDK by Espressive which is ESP IDF. And that brings me to the first fundamental. Although ESP32C3 uses many languages and frameworks, it is vital to understand the importance of its SDK, the manufacturer's SDK, which is ESP IDF. So keep an eye on terms such as Espressive or ESP IDF or ESP2 because they will be recurring and now you'll know where they came from. All the eight methods that I'm sharing have the same fundamental steps, compile, upload, monitor, or build, flash, and then log. Now notice in the first stage, we create a bin file 
on our laptop and the connection to the microcontroller is not required. After that, we connect the microcontroller and we do the serial monitor or we observe the logs from the microcontroller. Now notice this in the next step, which is Arduino CLI. Another common factor across all the eight methods are two configurations. Number one, the port, and number two, the board rate. In this case, I use 115200. Observe these two details, and we will use them in the next method, which is a very popular method called the platform I.O. And here's the next fundamental. We have to be absolutely clear about the board, the platform, and the microcontroller variant. Well, I got very confused at first. But thankfully, Espressive have a very detailed product page where it compares and shows the differences and similarities between all these variants. So keep a note on this because we will be using these three terms again in the next method, which is ESP Home.
in all the methods that we explored so far, we had to compile the binary in the first step. But in the next step, the pre-compiled binary is already provided to us. And we will be working with an interpreted language called MicroPython in contrast to a compiled language such as C or Arduino. So as you saw MicroPython, because of its interpreted nature, we didn't have to compile the entire program again with each little change. So a lot of fast, flexible, interactive development is possible with MicroPython. Now in the next method, we will also use a pre-compiled binary, but this time it is not a programming language. It is a firmware project called Tasmota, a very popular project for IoT devices. This time we will be using another new programming language called Rust. While most of ESP32 microcontrollers use the processor architecture called Extensa, this one with ESP32 C3, we will be using an open source processor architecture called RISC-V. So let's use Rust and learn how to make it blink.
Now I have to admit I was very curious in trying out Rust because of security challenges in creating connected devices. Rust is one of the memory safe languages. It works on embedded devices and apparently the most admired language among developers. I've been able to explore eight ways with this versatile microcontroller ESP32C3. And thanks to the intensive documentation and robust community support, I have a little bit of confidence that I can go ahead and use this microcontroller for my future projects. Now, of course, there's no single best way. And no matter what method I choose or you choose in the future, I know I will be coming back to the fundamentals that I picked up while tinkering my hands with the blinky LED. And I hope you learned something as well in case you want to pick up ESP32 C3 in 2023 because I don't think it's still too late. <laughs> in fact, the community support is so much greater, the documentation as well, that I'm really excited to see what I will be building. So thanks for watching and see you next time.